you're live. Hey. <laughs> okay, well, here I am in my giant dollar store horns. It's not 10 o'clock yet, so I'm just going to wait for people to get here. Um, let me make sure we have got ourselves. Is this even the view I want? Do I want to be like this? I might want to raise this up. Okay. Oh, hey, Brittany, you're here. I'm just, I haven't really like technically started yet. Hang on a second. I am ooh, trying to get a decent view. Let me move my camera up a little bit because I want people to be able to see what I'm doing tonight. So you want to be like looking down on what I'm doing, I think. That might be a little bit better. Is that better? I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. So we can see, because I'm going to be working here. I guess you don't really need to see me. You need to see what I'm doing. I don't know. I'm going to get into the chat on my phone. Wait. <laughs> I guess before we start, it's 9.59. I'm almost too late. I need to look up the ratio again of... <clears throat> feeding a squirrel downtown. Be careful, those squirrels downtown are cheeky. They will like take things right out of your hand. I've eaten lunch with squirrels downtown before. Some of them are pretty cool, but some of them can be rude. So, okay, I'm on this. Wait, is it 10 o'clock? Okay, <clears throat> I guess we're technically starting. Even if it's just me and you, Brittany. Um, hi, I'm Michelle from Unicorn and Centaur, and welcome to the crafting live stream. I do live streams every week, and they're always with some sort of equestrian theme. So we're doing crafting, and Halloween is coming up. And uh, in the Facebook group, Extra Equestrians, it came up like making paper mache horns for your horse. And so I've got paper. I had to buy paper. I What happened? Anyway, we'll get into that. So I have some newspaper. I have flour. I have glue, water, uh, aluminum foil, a uh, glass of wine. And I am going to, for the first time since second grade, attempt to make paper mache. Uh, which is like paper strips with glue. So hang on. So I think the last time I did this, I was in Girl Scouts and it was like second grade. And I don't even remember what we made, probably masks. I don't know. So we did paper mache, but there's two ways to make a glue. Apparently you can mix like glue with water or you can mix flour with water. I think I also saw you can do like wallpaper paste, but um, that's like seriously hardcore. Taylor is here. Hey, um, and if you've ever done paper mache before and have like tips and tricks, please uh, let me know in the chat. So it says I will need a bowl or large container. I have like two different ones here. Um, flour, which I have. Um, and I also have glue. I don't have like basic Elmer's glue, but I have this Aliens Tacky Glue. It's like a craft glue and I never ever use it. I'm always either using hot glue or I'm stitching things together. Um, so I find I rarely use this. So I'm just going to use it and try it for the paper mache. I'm going to try the glue and water and the flour and water and try both and see um, which I like best and give my thoughts um, here. So paintbrush to mix it up. I have two different paintbrushes back here to mix it up and newspaper. <clears throat> so, right, tear the newspaper into strips and we want torn edges on our uh, strips. We don't want to cut strips because that leaves a hard edge on the paper mache. So we tear strips, we'll do that. And then we make the glue mixture. Now, I've seen online that you're supposed to cook the flour and water, like boil the flour water first and then let it cool and use that as a paste. But I'm not getting that into it because I've also seen it where you just mix the flour and water. So, anyway, let me get into the chat on my phone. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Is that my thumbnail? Am I really doing that? Wearing a bite guard to sleep is a bit annoying. I imagine that might be. All right, y'all. Here we go. Cheers. So, uh, Brittany, uh, what did you decide you were going to do for your mayor for Halloween? What are you guys going to do? Somebody in the extra equestrians group said she was going to do um, 
cookie monster. Like her horse was going to be cookie monster and she was going to dress up as a cookie. And I thought that was cute. So, all right, let me just say something about newspapers. I, y'all know if you're not new here, um, I, I'm not a teenager on YouTube. YouTube is for teenagers and I'm an older lady. I don't even know what I'm doing here, but um, so I am old enough to remember when you got a newspaper every day. Like that was how you got your news. There was no internet. There was no YouTube. There was none of this. So you wake up in the morning and there's a newspaper in a little plastic bag on your driveway delivered to your door. And that's how you know, like the headline is like, that's your front page news and you don't swipe through it. You turn the pages and I know they still have newspapers, but I have not actually had an actual honest to God newspaper in I don't, 15 years, 20 years. I don't know. So Scott, bless him. Scott went like all over town looking for newspapers, like anywhere that had newspapers and didn't find any. So I went to Walmart and got this packing paper. And that is what I'm going to be tearing up into strips. So let me just lay this down. I'm probably going to make a giant mess because this involves like water and glue. I thought about doing this in the kitchen. <laughs> okay. So I need to make, uh, oh, let me just go ahead and put this on the floor. It's large. And just like take a couple of sheets. Right. Oh, Rebecca's here. Hey, Evie. Oh, hey, Evie. This is something, you know, I was thinking y'all have dogs. Like we're doing paper mache tonight and it's not just for horses. Like what if you made some sort of little horn or a hat or a helmet thing for Halloween for your dog? Um, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this, but I'm supposed to tear it into strips. So I'm not supposed to have a hard edge on anything. So, so who has done paper shea before? Like I've never really done this as a costuming thing or as a cosplay thing. Um, like I said, the last time I did this was like second grade. I've got hard edges on the ends of these. This is kind of fun. Where are my comments? Wait, what happened? Hang on, I can see over here. I've done it before in elementary school. You sent me up one of the, no way, oh. Why am I not doing, where's my chat? Where's my chat? <laughs> I'm looking at myself. <laughs> Confused about myself, y'all. Why am I like this? There y'all are. Okay. So, oh right, pirate. You're gonna be a pirate. So, are you both gonna be pirates, or um, is she gonna be a pirate? And oh, I don't know what you could be if you could be a. Is she gonna be a pirate. You could be the parrot, oh, Brittany. You could be the parrot on the pirate shoulder. Oh my gosh. You totally need to do that. And then you can like maybe put feathers on your coat or something like to have little feathers hanging off the, um, your sleeve. That would be awesome. All right. Strips of paper. So, uh, someone, um, I think it was Ashley in the, um, extra equestrians group was going to uh, make moose horns for her horse. And I'm not going to get all into moose horns today. Um, I thought about covering these, um, but what I'm going to do is make a, a base out of tin foil and then use the glue strips to wrap around there. So, yeah, so I'm hoping the paper mache is light. And plus, like when it dries, you can paint it. So you can. Uh, paint it whatever you want it to be. I'm doing awfully thick strips. I hope this is okay. I'm not going to do this the whole time. I'm just going to spend a couple minutes tearing up strips of paper and then we are going to make some glue and see which one we like better, the flour mixture or the actual glue mixture. 
Okay, but then we've got this hard edge here. I suppose I can use the hard edge. Now, as for attaching it, I was thinking of trying to do an entire video on how to attach things to a horse's head, different ways, of like putting things on a bridle. I don't know, like clipping it and zip tying it, and sewing it, and making an entire brow band or head stall. I don't know. Okay. So turn my mare into Jack Sparrow. I think that's cute. That's perfect. Um, who is the show jumper who caught hell for weather wearing feathers in her hair? I don't know. I don't remember that. I vaguely remember that. Um, all right. Oh my god. That is that wild horse wild horse, that dark horse Chardonnay that Adriana and I had last week on Tat Chat. And I feel like it has not done well in the week it's been in my fridge. Like, I don't remember my reaction being, hmm. So I'm giving side eye to my, um, my wine right now. Hmm. So let me just tear the little edgy edge off this. The edge. So if you are just joining me or just finding this online and you wanted to make paper mache horns for your horse and you thought this was going to be like a little quick video or whatever, no, this is a live stream. This is unedited and I do this every week. We hang out and we chat about stuff and share resources. I hope you guys can hear me. Um, uh, one of the things I love about being a puppeteer and a costumer is um, t those kind of art forms, uh, most of the artists I've met in those art forms can't wait to share their secrets with you. Like there are some art forms where the artist wants to hide how they create the art, but with costuming and puppetry, the tendency is to be like, um, oh, you like what I did? Okay, well, let me show you how I did it. <laughs> um, and I really like that about um, um, artists in a community to have that kind of um, open ar architecture of being able to ask questions because we can't know, all, as artists, we can't know every technique. We can't be experts on every way to do things. And the internet is vast. So to have a community of artists to ask questions of, hey, who knows where to get this? Hey, who knows how to do this? And then when someone asks a question in your wheelhouse, you can jump in with, well, every time I do it, it's blah, 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 blah. Speaking of community, y'all, we are almost at a thousand subscribers and I am so excited about that. I can't even tell you, it's been a goal since I started the channel over a year and a half ago. Um, this is like the first big goal. I'm so super excited. And what we're going to do, there's a bonus, um, there's a, uh, a bonus, uh, Wednesday, a bonus live stream in October. So the very last one, it's right before Halloween. We'll do like we did last year and we'll do a Halloween mukbang where we have all of our treats, but I'm also going to do a 1000 subscriber AMA. So it'll be like an ask me anything and it'll be me and probably Liam, uh, because I mean, Halloween candy, uh, so that is what we're going to do for our bonus live stream because we'll be at a thousand by then. And that is so exciting. I'm like super excited. So, and also um, the next video on this channel for anybody who's watching this, um, hopefully within the next couple of days, um, we have in the extra equestrians group on Facebook, I was gathering pictures for a video because I want to do an X amount of, you know, this many Halloween costume ideas for you and your horse. And so I want to have as many different pictures of different kinds of costumes as possible. Um, so I put out a call for different kinds of costumed horse pics there, but you can always uh, message me a picture of your horse in costume if you want your horse to be featured in the video, or you can tag me on Instagram or uh, send it to me in my Instagram uh, messages. And that is unicorn and centaur, all one word on Instagram. Anyway, I hope I explained that properly. Cause like I have a bunch of pictures of my horses in a bunch of different costumes. 
Um, but I thought it would be fun for the people in, um, for all of my um, subscribers and the people in the Facebook group and um, Instagram followers, like if you want a picture of you and your horse in a costume to be featured in my next video, then tag me in a picture, give me permission, tell me your horse's name and I'll put it in there. So, I'm almost done with this tearing part, I swear. Okay, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Let me catch up in chat. Ava, hello. <laughs> Love that horse in your uh, profile picture, Ava. Brittany says, next year Halloween be the best costume for me and my mare. Not sure what, though. I know. This year I wanted to do a huge elaborate cosplay. I really wanted to do Xena, Warrior Princess. I know it's not. I just... I don't know. I want to wear that costume. I don't know. None of my, um, or do like a Wonder Woman kind of thing. I would love to do like a full horse and me armor cosplay, but it just didn't happen this year. So mm, I'm not, I can't judge myself. Next year, next year. We always have next year, y'all. So a thousand subs. I know I'm almost there. I have like 20 more to go maybe. Um, I remember when you were trying to hit 100. I know, the first 100 is so hard. <laughs> uh, Britt, you've got a saddle pet for sale. We should do another sales post in the Extra Equestrians group. I also want to do another photo contest uh, this week as well. I have been neglecting my admin duties in there. So we have, I have new merch in my Etsy store. So we'll have that as a um, prize for the photo contest. Um, probably do that this weekend. So give me your photos of your horse in costume if you want your horse to be in the next YouTube video and join the extra equestrian group if you want to be in the next cover photo contest. Um, I give away prizes to the winner. It's usually a t-shirt or a tote bag or a mug with like unicorn stuff on it. I'm getting tired of this tearing noise, just so everyone knows this. So I'm almost done and ready to do something else. I am about to look. All right, I'm gonna take off this end. This is the last, this is it, y'all, I swear. All, this is it. Okay, everyone, take a deep breath in through your nose. And out through your mouth. That paper ripping was intense. Okay. <laughs> I was not prepared. Okay. Any of you watching who have sensory issues, I apologize for that. That part of the video is over. Brittany, photo. You know, I, um, the photo contest. Um, we haven't had a photo contest in a while. I think my, since August. Um, it was about the time of my birthday and I put up the picture of Artax as the cover photo. Um, and I kept meaning to do a photo contest since then and I haven't, but if you're not in the extra equestrians group, you should go join, um, extra with quotation marks. Make sure you, uh, type in that. I don't have a link in the description box yet. I'll try to put that in afterwards, but we need to do a cover photo contest either. I like it when the cover photo of the group is one of the group being extra with their horses. So I think the next theme is going to be scary since Halloween's coming up. So that'll be like, you know, your horse doing something scary or dressed as something scary or photoshopped as something scary. I don't know. So think about that. I don't know, if you have a chestnut mare, maybe just like post a picture of your chestnut mare. <laughs> Uh, this weekend to be busy with hopes for healing. Oh, well, it doesn't have to be like a, a, a recent costume pick. It can be from the past years. If you have, um, it doesn't have to be this year's costume picture. It could be last year's or the year before or something when you were eight years old, you know? Um, what else, man? So, okay. What time is that? Okay, we got to make some glue, I think, y'all. Actually, do you think I should mold some more horns? I was thinking, like, okay, this is one of my ideas. It was, like, a Texas Longhorn, but I feel like this is really dumb. <laughs> um, also, because the horse's ears go up like this, it's hard to do. Sonny might, his ears might be more relaxed. But our tax with that Arabian headset and his ears, like, straight up in the air. So then I was thinking something that would go like this, like, behind the ear. 
and like be like a dragon horn kind of a situation. Um, so uh, I think that's what I want to try. So let me do my aluminum foil. Da, 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 da. Um, to do the paper mache, you need a base for your sculpture. So I remember when I was in second grade and we were doing this in Girl Scouts, we used a balloon. So we made like a paper mache thing. I remember that part of it. Uh, it was a paper mache thing around a balloon. And then you pop the balloon and it's like, oh my God, it's still a thing. Um, so there's balloon. You can also drape it around something that you're then going to take off. Just know that you're making it out of glue. So make sure it's like a nonstick surface. I think you have to coat things with Vaseline or flour or I don't even know. Um, you can also use cardboard as the basis for uh, something, but I... I'm going to use tin foil. It's very lightweight and it's very malleable. So I am going to kind of just make it look like a thing and make sure I'll make sure it's flat. Because I think for the bottom, I may put a piece of felt, like glue a piece of felt to the bottom, and then I can stick that on the um, the bridle. And build that up and paint it. So then we can make dragon horns for your horse. Woo! Then I'm going to make two of these. Me and Summer in costume. Yeah, Harley and Joker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And put a couple of them if you have a couple of different costumes. It's cool. Because it's not... When, I, when we do the photo contest... Um, I always say one entry per person. You know, we don't just don't want to have like one person with 50 different entries. I want like one entry per person for the photo contest. But for the video I'm making, you can submit as many different costumes as you like. So all I'm doing is making a base and pretty much Turning this into horns. So we have substituted the sound of paper ripping ASMR for tinfoil crinkling ASMR. All right. I have to make these like kind of match. We want to exaggerate that curve, I think. Yes. Yes. Something like that. Ah, 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 ah. Very dragony. Okay. Okay. Now we need, this one needs another layer and it needs to do more things. It's not as big as the other one. Bless its heart. So we're gonna, we don't even care about you. You are nothing. All right. All right, hang on. I need another sip of this iffy Chardonnay. Why are you doing this to me? The foil sounds weird, does it? It does sound weird. Okay. Okay, now we might have something resembling similar. And you know what? I can build it up with the paper mache as well. This is just the core. That's just the core of it. Here we go. Now, see that one looks, this one's definitely longer. I need a little bit more on the little one. Here we go. So we added a little bit more to it. Yes, yes. Looking a little bit more like each other. Okay, okay. Okay, seriously, okay. Okay, so we have our bases. And we're going to apply 
um, glued up strips of paper around these. I'm about to make a big old mess, aren't I? <laughs> I put a piece of paper down, hang on. Let me think about this. Let me think about my life and my choices. Wop sided dragon. <laughs> I know. Well, it might be. You know what? When you are doing your own homemade costumes, especially if you've never done any of this kind of stuff before, don't judge yourself if what comes out is not um, totally uh, symmetrical or perfect or looks like you, even like you envisioned it. Um, be okay with failing. If you're... If you're having fun doing it, you can always make another one. You can always make repairs to it. Um, you can always learn from it from next for uh, next time. But um, I'm not the greatest at everything, and I don't know much about tinfoil things. Right, so let's get that back. Which one do we want to try first? Which one do we want to try first? The flower glue or the glue glue. Okay. So let's start with a container. I am going to take a piece of paper and put it down under where I'm working to sort of minimize my mess. So I have my torn up strips of paper. I have my horns that I made out of tinfoil that will eventually attach to my horses like dragon horns. And I'm going to make in here. Okay. Hang on one second, y'all, because I am going to... Okay, for the glue mixture, it's two parts of glue to one part water in a mixing bowl. Um, if you have a stronger bonding glue, one part glue, one part water. Okay. I think pretty much do it until it's the right consistency. Uh, with a flour mixture, one part flour, one part water. Okay. So blend it up, adjust consistency, find a surface you want a paper mache. Um, then you dip the strips. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get my fingers messy. I may not be able to, I may not be able to do the chat after this, hang on. Remove excess moisture and then lay the strip over the surface, pressing it down, doing it alternate ways. Okay, and then paint it. Okay, so I'm totally doing that. Uh, starting to feel tired. I work late today. Yes, I have been, I've been actually getting enough sleep lately and it's startling how that was affecting my day-to-day -day life and my anxiety in general. Okay, I'm going to do the glue one first and I am not going to measure. I'm famous for this. Um, I'm just going to dump some in here and then add some water. Bloop. That's probably good, right? Well, <laughs> okay, one more. This is probably way too much paste. I'm making way too much paste. And now that I've gotten around the edge, it's going to just be cemented there forever. Good for me. Okay, so we're gonna put that aside. And now we're going to add some water. And then blend it with a Vipanza brush with our terrible French accent. And then we splash just a little bit of water everywhere. How do I know if it's one to one? I guess I'm not measuring it, so I don't. That would be too much. That's fine. It's fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> okay, so now I have got this glue and water and we're mixing it together like it's a witch's cauldron. It's got like, okay, this is kind of satisfying. Okay. Oh 
Oh my God, I'm never gonna get this brush clean, am I? It's gonna be glue in this brush forever. Is this now a glue brush? Okay, so now it's like there's glue in this milky liquid. I have to keep stirring it up. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it is liquidy, but it's still, it's not completely, it's chonky. I don't know if you can see in here. It's like, it's plenty chonky. So let's just chat, shall we, while I am mixing up my paste. So this is an FYI, if you are making the glue version, the glue is very, I mean, I'm using Aileen's Tacky Glue. So I think like if you're using the Elmer's glue that you can get at whatever store you're at or that kind of like all purpose glue, that it might, you might have a different experience. But this is craft glue and water that I am mixing together and it's mixing, but it's mixing kind of slowly. So I'm going to continue mixing this up. If I have a hard time mixing this all together and I get impatient, I may go ahead and make the flower one in my other container and see if that mixes easier. And then we'll use that. I also saw somewhere online that if you make the flower kind of paste, uh, that with flour and water that you should put a little bit of salt in it. I'm not doing that. Um, but you should put a little bit of salt in it uh, to keep mold from forming. So there you go. Little tip from the internet. This is mixing. This is mixing. It's starting to get creamy. Okay. Okay. Feel you there, hang on. Oh, ASMR. I know it is kind of ASMR video tonight. If I could get this up here, you could hear me like mixing around all the stuff. So traffic downtown is a pain. It absolutely is. There is like nowhere to park. When we're doing tours downtown, the tourists are always like, where do we park? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, bless their hearts. It's got to be rough, but I mean. Okay, seriously, there's still some that needs to be mixed up here. So I'm being a little bit anal about it. Pardon me, everyone. I don't want my uh, paste to be chonky. This is really thick, too. So I might add just like a sploosh more water. So. So yeah, Taylor says you get off at four on Tuesdays. Are you working downtown, Taylor? Um, where are you working again? I can't remember, please forgive me. Okay, this is starting to happen. We're starting to get a very liquidy paste here. All right, I'm gonna let that sit. I'm feeling like it. it I need a break from it. It's almost completely uh, mixed together. I'm gonna also make the flower one. Ooh, I might, since this is just an experiment anyway, I might do one of the horns in the glue mixture and one of the horns in the flower mixture so that tomorrow when they're dry, I can post the results on Instagram and let you guys know um, what the outcome of that was. In the architectural model shop at the Lucas and Trustees, oh, okay. Lucas Theater, nice. Uh, Lucas Theater, so, 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 so pretty. Okay, so. Are you guys ready? It's time to make a mess. What time is it? It's 10.30. Okay, we're halfway into this. All right, wait, 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 wait. Before I get my fingers filthy and can no longer maybe keep up with the chat. Um, I might be really dumb for what I'm about to do. Okay, so um, we have our base that we're gonna put the strips around. We have our paper strips, which also I honestly need to rip um, each end of the strip away as well. Oh my gosh, do I need to sit here and do that? I might need to sit here and do that. So cow horns are one thing I would think of to use this for. Moose horns, um, dragon horns. 
What other kind of horns could you paper mache? Or what other thing could you paper mache to put on your horse's head? I wonder if we could do paper mache helmet covers, like helmets. Um, I really want to make some cool helmet covers or have some cool painted helmets. Um, just so to make it cool to wear a helmet again. I want it to be awesome to wear a helmet. I don't want it to look, and if it looks ridiculous, it should look ridiculous on purpose. Like my mushroom helmet, if you've seen my Instagram or my last writing video, I wore it in my writing blog. Um, my helmet, I painted like a Super Mario mushroom <laughs> because I am a nerd. Hannah's here making, yes, Hannah, we are making paper mache horns. Um, in the Facebook group, Extra Equestrian, somebody wanted to make their horse a moose. So we were, there were a couple of suggestions to, uh, do paper mache. And I have, I realized it's been like since second grade that I've done a paper mache anything. And it's easy. It's like strips of paper and glue water, right? Like what's hard. And then you paint it. And you can make pretty much any shape you want. So I'm like, okay, maybe we should do that for the crafting live stream. So anyone who's watching can watch me sitting here and decide, do I want to spend an evening of my life making a mess in my house in order to have a Halloween costume for my horse? So I'm trying to help you decide if it's worth it and to show you the differences between the different kinds of methods. Because there are two different glues. Um, well, three, but I'm not doing wallpaper paste tonight. So I'm doing a flower type glue and a glue type glue. So the first one I made is literally just glue and water mixed together until it's totally, totally mixed together. And then we're going to do um, the flower that I have over here. And then we're going to start laying strips down on the things here. I said we were done with ripping paper, didn't I? I'm so mean to y'all. Why am I like this? I don't know. Hannah, I gotta go work. Aw, I'm so glad you stopped by. Thank you so much. If you wanna make paper mache or see the results of it, um, check the end of the video uh, tomorrow and see what we figured out. I'm so glad you stopped by, Hannah. Thank you so much. So is anybody else making anything? Um, we got, Brittany is going to be a, a pirate with her and her horse. So who else has a Halloween costume idea? Or, like, I don't show my horses. I just make Halloween costumes for them because it's fun. <laughs> it's so much fun. And I love it. So this is a new thing that I wanted to try because I enjoy trying new things. And especially new creative projects, because who knows when I try new creative techniques, sometimes I hate it. And I'm like, well, I'm never doing that again. Okay. That was nothing but stress and tears and headache and expense. Sometimes when you make something yourself, it's so like the materials are so expensive, uh, that why bother? And it's not pleasant to make and it's hard or whatever. But sometimes you learn to make something and you had a great time and it was relaxing and you could see yourself getting better at it over time. Um, so that's one reason I like to try out new things. That's how I figured out I really love knitting. I wanted to like knit a thing. So I figured out how to do it. And then once I figured it out, I was like, hey, this is fun. So I kept doing it. And then there have been plenty of things I've tried over the years that I'm like, wow, <laughs> I'm done with that. No. I wonder, since I've got these short, short horns, if I'm going to have to, like, tear these into even smaller strips. I hope I don't. I hope I don't. Whatever happens, y'all, we're about to learn something. <laughs> okay. Okay, everybody. I might. Okay, here's some shorter strips. I'm just going to, don't judge me. Don't click away. I'm going to make a, a little pile of shorter strips. Shh. All right. I just want to be prepared. Like if the long strips don't work out and then I'm left here with gluey, ooey hands, I don't want it to be 
a huge deal and I want to be able to have more strips right here in front of me. Okay, so we're going to do partial short and partial long. Do, 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 do. I think I'm finally ready. Am I ready? Am I really ready? Okay, workspace, horns, short pieces. I am going to do a couple more long pieces. Don't you judge me. Okay. Short pieces. Short pieces. So, um, also when I have, when I make really good costume pieces for my horses, I keep them. So it's not like, so then I can use them again for other photos or other opportunities. Cause I just think it's fun riding horses in costume. I still, that was one of the original ideas for Unicorn and Centaur was to have costumed trail rides where everybody shows up and your horse is in costume and you're in costume. Like, did you see your horse dressed like a pirate and you show up dressed like a pirate and your trail guide has a, tra has a treasure map and you guys have to go through the trail on the woods on horseback with um, your costumes on looking for the treasure on the map. Does that not sound like fun? But I don't have enough money to get something like that off the ground and um, that just didn't happen. So we're just, we're being extra on our own now, but I still want to do that someday. If I get enough money, if I get enough of following, we are going to invest some money in figuring out some costume trail rides y'all, because I just, I think that sounds like so much fun. Or everyone's like riding a unicorn and you're dressed like fairies and elves and you're like on some kind of Lord of the Rings quest through the woods. Um, oh God, I still want to do it. I really do. I just, I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't have the resources. Someday. Emily, yes, would you? <laughs> you and your horse are going to be Indians? Okay. Brittany, gotta go. Drop your phone on your face. Ha <laughs> ha. I always joke to Scott. I'm like, okay, I'm going to lay in bed until I drop my phone on my face. <laughs> <laughs> until I go to bed. Good night, Brittany. I love you. Um, make sure you share uh, past costume pictures in the extra equestrians group. Um, so, yes. All right, let's make the other kind of paste so we can see what this is like. Okay. So I have this paste where I just mixed craft glue with water, pretty much one to one. It's been sitting here. It was hard to mix together at first, but now it's rather smooth. So I have another container. It's like this little aluminum pan. And we are going to do flour and water and see, we're gonna do one horn with the blue mixture and one with flour mixture. So it's supposed to be one to one. So I'm gonna do like a cup of flour and a cup of water and see. That's gonna make a lot of paste, good for me. Good for me. Wow. Okay. Now we've got some more water. Adding a cup of water. Boop. And look what. Okay. I have another paintbrush. And now we're going to mix this together until it becomes a paste. How do you join the group? Oh, the Extra Equestrians group is a Facebook group. Um, if you're on Facebook, you can join and um, search Extra Equestrians. And the extra is in quotation marks. So it's quotation, extra, quotation mark, and then equestrians is the second word. Um, so you can also find a link to it on the About page on my YouTube channel. Um, let's see. I've got it. This is like a mess. I'm making cake here. Well, dang it, now I want cake. I might have to add a little bit more water to this paste because it's really thick. It looks like I'm making like some sort of cake in here, but it's probably not delicious. It's just like literally flour and water. Isn't it crazy how flour and water makes glue and it also makes bread? Mmm, I can eat an entire loaf of bread. Wow. Great. Bread, 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 bread. Now I want bread. Now I'm just, I'm mixing together this flour and water and suddenly I'm craving biscuits. I feel like it needs to be thinner than this. Like, look. 
All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Add in maybe a quarter to a third cup more water. That's me when I do it. Now I want cake too, right? Mm, all the carbs. Yes, 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 yes. All right, so here I am just mixing, mixing, mixing. So now I'm going to have two different kinds of paste. And we're going to soak our strips. So if you do this for you and your horses, it probably won't take you as long as it is taking me right now since I'm making two different kinds of paste. But I can help you decide which kind you want to make. Hopefully. Helping you making, this is me, helping you make good life choices. That's what this channel is all about. It's just being <laughs> responsible. No, who am I kidding? There's nothing responsible about having horses and being a grown-up lady wearing, you know, wearing costumes and riding horses through the woods like a weirdo. This is lumpy. This is like, this is like lumpy southern gravy. Like we need to pour this over some biscuits. I'm wondering if that's a little bit better though. Can we see that texture? So that's a little bit more liquidy. I don't think I don't. Uh, that may be all we're gonna do. Okay. I don't know if I need to make it more liquidy. Excuse me. I need another sip of my questionable wine. This wine has gone a little weird in the last week. In the week, it's been in my refrigerator. It's only been in there a week in my fridge. And it's already tasting a little, there's like something in the back of my mouth at the end of it. It's still got a nice flavor, but at the end of it, it doesn't finish nicely anymore. Okay. I am going to put a little bit more water in this. I know it's weird. So if you're following along at home, my ratio for the flour has been like one and a half cups of water to one cup of flour. And that's making a nice liquidy glue. You know, I have to say, um, as far as expense, the flour one is definitely cheaper. I mean, a cup of flour goes a long way, um, especially like, I don't know, even if you get like the giant thing of Elmer's glue, I think flour is cheaper. Okay. But let's see how it performs. I'm going to do one horn in the flour, and we're just about ready to do this, kids. Are you ready? I'm just about to get, it looks like cheese dip. It kind of does. I have chips in the, you know, I could, I wonder what it tastes like. I mean, it's just water and flour. I'm not going to taste the craft glue one. <laughs> you can't make me. Okay. So let's get started. I want to start with the wheat one first. Wait, <laughs> before I get started. Hang on, you guys. Hang on. Wait for me. I have... I have a rag, a clean rag, that I want to soak in water so that I can wipe my hands off if I need to spill water down the front of my shirt. Okay. Because it's about go time here. I think once I get my hands into um, the glue, I'm probably going to just keep going. Um... I feel like that's the point of no return. And if you're doing it, this at home, like, you know, you can probably just go to the sink in your house or whatever. Okay, so now I have a wet cloth and a little container of water over here that I can wash my hands off with. So, wash my hands. So we are taking a strip. Let's try a long one first, a nice long fat one. And we are laying it in the glue. Ew, <laughs> this is nutty. This may be a little thick, just like me. I said it. Yeah, I think the long strips are too long. I just got some on myself. Okay, so you're supposed to like press out the extra glue. So 
So that's what I'm doing with my fingers right here. Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and like that. We're just gonna rip that. So this one is going to go around. Um, wow, it's just like ripping off. Okay. How was this easy when I was in seventh or uh, second grade? I'm already regretting my life choices. Wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a mess. Okay, but the flower itself is not sticky. Okay, I have to press out. <laughs> the paper keeps breaking. I have to press out this part. And I am wrapping it around. This is, maybe I had to have too much, I don't know. It doesn't seem to be very sticky. Maybe it needs to dry some more. Okay, so this is the flower. I am wrapping it around. I'm definitely gonna need more layers. This is a mess. What even? Oh my God. <laughs> Y'all, okay, I need the short strips now. For real, short strips. So I'm putting a short strip in here. And I'm getting all the excess. Um, the Getting the excess off seems to be uh, key to working this. Like if it's got extra stuff on it. That is undesirable. Okay. Think I might be getting the hang of it. Short strips. Really get that excess off. I'm gonna work this to the end and then switch over to the other glue and see how it compares. Um, just working with it and feeling it. So here I am wrapping. So it's just, if you have a tactile problem with touching wet things, this is not your craft. If you can't touch wet and sticky things without going, Bleh. you're going to have trouble with this one because this is super messy. On the other hand, if you uh, really enjoy um, these kinds of tactile crafts, you need to do some paper mache is what I'm saying. Okay. I'm glad I put down that strip of paper as well to protect the table. Okay, we're working towards the end of the horn here. And it does suggest overlapping pieces on the things that I've read online. Oh, Lord. All right, that's not what I thought. I need another little piece here, don't I? Okay, whoa, that's way too goopy. You'll know when it's too goopy. We have almost covered this once. All right, wiping off the excess and then wrapping it around. Okay, there's an area here. I'm seeing at this point little areas that need to be covered. So I am going back and patching other areas. It doesn't, I don't think it has to be like one single layer perfectly overlapping. I think it can be a bit messy, especially if you're going to be adding other layers. Okay, I am sort of wrapping around the tip of the horn there. So I just have all these layers. This might be something I have to go back to and just do multiple layers of it. I'm gonna go and patch another part of it. Here. 
after the initial factor of the flour mixture, it is fine. I'm okay. Um, it starts to dry on your fingers in places that aren't being dipped regularly. So I'm starting to get like crusty uh, feelings all over my fingers. Okay. 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 Let's just, that's nice. That's nice. We did that. That's okay. Here we go. Okay. I feel like I have this totally covered and I'm trying to press down on wherever there might be seams or hmm, I might have to make a little end for the horn. Okay. I'm going to let this sit for a moment for a few and I am going to wipe my hands off and we're gonna try the other glue and do a layer on the other horns and see how that works. So gutted alligator, I'm the only person that liked the video. Aw, <laughs> usually I go in there first and like like it myself <laughs> if I'm doing, uh, if I'm able to schedule it ahead of time, <laughs> I'll go in there and like it so I have at least one like. Thank you for liking the video, I'm giving it a thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Uh, where do I get the sculptor code at? I order it from the company. I think it's Rose Arts. I don't know if it's rosearts.com, um, but you can look up sculpt or code, S-C-U-L-P-T, and then or, and then C-O-A-T. So it's like three words. So, yay, two people. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so I have the one here that is um, the flower coated. So I've got the other horn and now we are going to put the flower aside and I wanna bring the glue. So this is just mixing glue. Oh, this is gonna be so sticky. Okay. <laughs> I've got my thing. And we've already learned that the short strips are better. So let me go ahead and use that. So to make your paper mache, we are dipping into the glue. Okay, and then just, I'm just starting to lay it around in strips. And we'll see what happens. We're gonna see what happens. Let's see, we've only got like five more minutes in the live stream, but I might sit here a little bit longer, at least until I get this horn covered. So we can see, so far the glue um, actually feels at first a little bit easier to work with than the flower. Um, the flower is a little bit drippier and uh, wetter. Maybe that's just because I added too much water. So note to anyone trying it at home, maybe stick to that one-to-one -one ratio. This also feels like it clings a little bit better when you're adding layers. Maybe that's because it's actual glue. Um, oh, I'm already feeling it dry on my fingers though, which is, it dries differently than the flower does. So I don't know if that would be a pleasant sensation for you or not, but it does feel a little bit different. So here I am applying more layers. We're working up around our horn here. Yeah, the flower one felt more like the layers were all gonna sort of come off and I had to work a little bit harder to get them to stick together and to stick to um, what you're putting it on. So FYI there. All right. Hang on. Getting it around here. Okay. And then, yeah, I'm just gonna have to add more. So if you have watched this entire video or if you're checking to the end to see what the um, what the verdict was, um, I feel like it's just a matter of, if you're gonna choose what you wanna do, just whatever you have on hand. If you don't have any glue on hand, use some flour. You've probably got some in the cabinet. Um, the glue might stick a little bit better. Um, also, it's not going to be a one hour project. If you are sitting down 
to make some sort of paper mache costume piece for yourself, for your horse, for your dog or your cat or your bearded dragon or whatever you have at your house. Um, it's going to take you a whole evening of making glue and tearing strips of paper and making a base for whatever you're doing. Most of costuming is and in puppetry as well, most of it is just creative problem solving. It's having to figure out, it's like, hey, I need horns for a horse. How do we do that? <laughs> so we figure it out and we make things and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't work, we learn why it didn't work so that we don't make those mistakes again. And we share that knowledge with other people, which is fun. And we share what works. We share our successes. Hey, oh my gosh, you guys, this totally worked. Look, you can do it too. Those things are fun. So I am continuing to wrap this around. Wait, oh, I need it right there. So that's one of the reasons I love the Extra Equestrians Facebook group because it's like everybody's sharing. When I make videos on this channel, it's just me, you know, videoing my horses, sharing my content. But then in the Facebook group, everybody can post their horses and their pictures. Um, everybody can join in the fun. Everybody can share what creative project they're working on right now um, and what's working and what isn't. And, Ask the group to help troubleshoot. It's great. Okay, almost done. I need like one more little piece for the end. I wonder if I can just, I bet I'm gonna, we're gonna see if this works. I have an idea. So I've ripped a piece into almost two strips. So like an H, but it's got like a middle on it. So I'm going to put the middle part on top of the horn and see if I can wrap. Okay, it's not working like I thought it would. But I'm still wrapping. So, this is a mess. Okay, forget it. Forget it. Crap. Okay. I'm a mess right now. Well, this was a mess. I feel like the glue is holding its shape better, probably because it's glue. So we have now the base for one of our horns. And here is our, see, it's still got the floppy do down here. So here's the um, wheat glue one. It's like wheat flour and water. It's a little baggier in places. And it seems to just make the paper wet and tear. Ooh, that's a good point. This one seems to be tearing a lot more where when you make the glue out of glue, watered down actual glue, it seems to have the paper hold its integrity a little bit more. Whereas with the wheat flour paste, you really have to watch oversaturating the paper and it tearing. This looks like it's going to be a problem. Okay. I'm going to leave these here. Let me wipe my hands off because this is actual sticky glue and we're going to stop our live stream now. Um, so my verdict on the paper mache is I will probably keep going. I'm going to um, nix the wheat paste and use the glue paste. It seems to work a lot better, at least initially, and I'm going to check these again in the morning and see what their condition is. But um, Gosh, that ends up, and uh, also FYI, it takes a lot longer than you think it is. Don't think it's going to be like an hour. Um, plan to spend your whole evening making a mess in your kitchen, making paper mache, and figuring it out, or having it up for several nights so you can um, put a layer on something and then let it dry, like stick it under a fan and let it dry, and then go back to it in a couple hours or the next day when it's dry and add another layer and sculpt it a little bit more. So you may not be able to kick it out in one session or one like hour. So I put my horse in a new pasture and she tried to kill me. Uh-oh. <laughs> that can happen when you change up your horse's routine. So I'm going to have one last questionable sip of wine. 
thank you guys for joining the live stream tonight. And um, let me know if you end up making something paper mache for your horse, tag me in the picture on Instagram or post it in the Extra Equestrians Facebook group so um, everybody can enjoy it. And I will see you guys next week for Tech Chat. Yay! <laughs>